The all-new Scoggin Falster 3 is a Wear OS watch with a clean and simple design and some impressive features packed into one of the newest smartwatches on the market. This watch claims to have a robust swimproof design, advanced battery controls, Google Assistant, heart rate tracking, GPS, Google Pay, remote call and texting, and much more. In this video, I want to put this watch to the test and show you everything you need to know about this watch to help you decide whether or not this is the watch for you. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're looking at the Fossil Scoggin Falster 3. So kind of a long name there. Fossil is not really part of the name, but it is essentially a Fossil watch, and I'll talk more about that later on. But I want to talk about a lot with this watch. So it is a Wear OS watch, and there are so many Wear OS watches out there, but I really do like this one, arguably more than many others out there. We liked the Gen 5 a lot last year by Fossil, one of the best smartwatches of 2019. Now the Scoggin Falster 3 looks really promising and may be an early contender for one of the better watches of 2020. So with that being said, let's dive into this. I wanna start off with the mechanical tour, show you guys what it looks like and what it's capable of from the outside first. So the watch itself is 42 millimeters. And so that's kind of a mid size. It's not especially small, but it's definitely not large. And so for comparison, we can set this next to just a classic analog fossil watch. And you'll see that it is a relatively similar size. So it's not going to be anything too large on your wrist, not really going to be especially small. And it actually has a much different aesthetic. This is something that Scoggin's kind of known for. There are three different colors you can find on the website for this watch. And I'll put the link in the description below. But I'll pop them up on the screen right now. You have this one right here, which is silicone blue. Uh, it feels really nice. It's not really a common texture. I don't see many watches with this texture, this kind of band. Then we also have the gunmetal one and a leather one and of course all of these you can swap out the bands as much as you want they're just a classic 22 millimeter band and if you look at the back you can just pull this little tab right there and the whole thing comes off really easily so quick interchange and it's pretty standard for watches to have that now looking at the front of this it has a 1.3 inch screen right there it's an oled screen and it's really bright in daylight it gets dim at night when you want and it has adaptive brightness which means that you're never really going to be struggling to see this if you have that on. So if it's bright out, it gets brighter and, and you get the idea from there. Now this kind of has like two bezels in a way. So around the screen, so you have just a black space around the screen, like a ring right there. And then you have an actual black ring around that, which I'm, I can't tell exactly what it is. It might be like glass filled nylon or something, um, but it kind of protects the screen a little bit. I think that's kind of a nice thing to have. So you don't have to worry about scratching the glass if you come at something from an angle there. So looking at the actual body then, we see on the right side, you have three buttons. The top and bottom, just like the Fossil Gen 5, you can customize these. So looking at this one, if we single tap the top button, I have it opening Google Translate. If we single tap the bottom button, I have it opening um, just the different customized watch faces I have. Then if we double tap the top button, you open up Google Pay. Um, and this does actually have NFC in here, so you can have Google Pay, you can tap and pay. It's a feature that I don't really find myself using particularly often, but I understand some people really like that feature, and it is nice to have on a watch. So if we tap and hold the top, nothing happens. If we double tap the bottom, uh, nothing happens again. And if we tap and hold the bottom, again, nothing happens. Now, looking at the middle button, the crown, you can tap it to either go back or go home. And then from the home screen, if you tap it, it opens up the app drawer and you can then you know, dial it, spin it like that. And you can go up and down and check out all the different apps. I'll get into these later on in the video, but if you tap and hold the, the crown right here, it actually opens up Google Assistant, which is I think really nice to have on this watch. Having Google Assistant is great when you're just trying to, because it's a small screen, it's not always easy to type things. Sometimes you just wanna just say it and have it look up what the weather is, for example. Now, this watch is really similar to the Fossil Gen 5. And I know I keep saying that in the video, but there are actually some subtle differences that you want to know. If you're considering this watch or the Gen 5, definitely consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss it when I release my review comparing those two watches within the next week. On the top and bottom, you have a really different aesthetic here where it almost looks like you have like a metal bar going around there. Like I mentioned before, it's actually not a bar because you can remove the straps fairly easily, but it does have that nice aesthetic. I think it's something that looks really cool. Even from just wearing this for a few days now, I have been getting a lot of compliments on the aesthetic of this watch. And one thing I think I'll do probably is actually change the band every now and then. I think maybe find a little bit of a classier band. I think that would match this watch better. But on the backside, what we have is 
Pretty simple, pretty standard. You just have your heart rate sensor in the middle with two heart sensing diodes. Should be fairly accurate. I'll test that out later on in the video. And then we have two metal rings for the charger. Now it does use the classic fossil charger with two little nodes that touch the two metal rings to charge your watch. I wish it was key charging so you could charge it on like a, a wireless charging pad or on the back of a, a wireless charging phone. But this one, unfortunately, you do need that little, that little cradle. But I do actually like that. It doesn't matter the orientation. You just slap it on there, it's magnetic. It works really well. And so if you only have one watch, I see no problem with having this style. One last thing to note about this watch mechanically is it is actually rated for swimming and showering and, you know, splashing. It's fine with water. As long as you're not, you know, scuba diving with this, you'll pretty much be okay in almost every situation. Okay, so let's test out the speaker on this with Google Assistant. What's the weather in Denmark? Right now in Copenhagen, it's 43 with showers. Saturday, there will be scattered showers with a high of 43 and a low of 37. Something to note is not all apps allow you to scroll with the little crown on the side. So like Google Fit, for example, I have to actually manually scroll. So when I compare the heart rate on the watch to my heart rate taken from my pulse, it's usually accurate within plus or minus two or three beats per minute, which is accurate enough to tell you how well you're working out, but obviously is not going to replace any medical equipment. Really quickly, getting into a few specs about this watch, it has eight gigabytes of onboard storage, which I think is really nice if you're trying to go for a run. I download music on this so I don't bring my phone. You could also have pictures or whatever you really want on this watch. It has one gigabyte of RAM, has Snapdragon 3100, which is a pretty decent chip to have in a watch. It's compatible with Android 6 or better and also iOS 10 or better, which is most phones out there on the market today. This also has Bluetooth 4.2, which is low energy, which means that uh, it's not Bluetooth 5.0, but you can connect it to your phone or actually something else about this watch is Bluetooth. You can connect earbuds to this wirelessly as well, which goes back to what I said with running, connecting your earbuds directly to the watch, I think is really nice. So now looking at the interface of this watch, right off the bat, we do have the always on display and there are many different watch faces that make this look slightly different. But if we tap on it, you'll see my watch face right here is pretty standard, has the hour, tells you the minute and has like their logo right there, battery on the bottom, date, and then on the top we have the weather. And you can actually customize this however you want. There are many different options for what you want on the top and the side and the bottom, whatever you want. And so if we tap and hold on this, you can actually see different watch faces, many different watch faces in the app and you can customize like this one for example like I said you can change the maybe if you don't want the weather and if you want like your agenda you can have that up there so if we swipe up from the bottom you see your notifications and so you can clear them you'll get text here you can reply to them right there if we swipe from the left you have your kind of like your day thing and so you can use your crown to scroll down this so if we swipe over the other way we get into our tiles now unfortunately Google Wear OS does actually limit you to five tiles, but what I have right here is like a, a quick timer right there. We can find my heart rate. Uh, I have like my agenda or my tasks for the day, whatever's on my calendar. The weather's pretty nice. And then just my fitness right here. Swiping down from the top gives you the quick settings here where you can see, you know, what kind of connections you have right now. So we have Bluetooth, batteries at 34%. And actually speaking of battery, you'll see on the top right here, there's different battery modes, which we saw in the Gen 5. It's something that is actually really nice to have on watches like this so that they last a little bit longer than like daily mode. Even as it says here, it's only going to last one day. We do actually have extended, you have custom, you have time only, and time only on this, I think, looks a little better than some other time only watches. It has still kind of a decent look to it, but it removes so many other features. You can only see the time and only when you push the button. So other than that, getting into settings, you have a lot that you can customize with this watch, including the display. So you can go and change the brightness here. You can change about your, like your watch faces. You can change the font. I'm not gonna get through all the settings, but you can change the sounds right there, apps and notifications. Then we have connectivity. I mentioned it before, but we have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, NFC, and then we also have location. So a lot of sensors in this watch, which when they are all on, it contributes to the watch not lasting as long. So when all of these are on, it lasts about one day. We can easily make this watch last maybe upwards of you know three days if you turn some of those off. Then we can have the, the I'm actually not gonna say that, but the detection for when you're trying to summon the Google Assistant, if you don't wanna have to tap and hold this, I usually leave it off just so people don't accidentally trigger it. Now that's not everything with this watch. You actually can go and tap the crown and you have all of your apps here. 
Now, there are many different apps you can get. I think it's easily in the thousands if you go to the Play Store. And while some of these apps are not perfectly made yet, there are definitely a lot that are decent apps out there. So you can have Messenger, Pandora, uh, Telegram, like there's a lot of other apps on here that work really well, honestly. And so compared to many other watches that don't really have the same caliber app store, the Google one seems to be pretty good for Wear OS watches. Now, of course, as you see, we have Spotify there. You have uh, like contacts, find my phone, a little sequence of different Google Fit things here. The flashlight, which just turns your watch up to max brightness and just like kills your battery, basically. Uh, not really an exciting app there. Now, I should mention this. Play Music is where I go to download my music on here. Um, I can't actually download on Spotify right now. Going down, there's really a lot of other apps. I'm not going to go through all of them. Google Translate's an interesting one as well. Uh, if you're just like going for a run or if you're in a restaurant or something and you need to translate something really quickly because you're in another country, it could be nice to just have this to quickly translate what you're trying to say. So let's get into the app now. This watch relies really on one app, but of course you can have other apps connected to this, like Google Fit, for example. All of your health data will be kind of funneled that way, but Google Wear is where most of your customization will happen for the watch. So looking at this, it tells you like the percentage of your battery right there. Uh, you can take a screenshot of the watch. You can disconnect the watch. You can go down here and change the faces. So I talked a lot about the faces. Just some that are right here. You have uh, like, I don't know, some pretty interesting ones. Danish Star, I think, looks interesting. And Skagen is a Danish company. They're in Denmark, in case you guys didn't know. Um, but so you, you do have some decent watch faces right here. I think they all look pretty neat. Some of them move around like the night sky one. And you can customize these as well. Going down, you can adjust your tiles on here. You can change your notifications, your agenda, and Google Assistant settings. All of that you can also do on the watch. So really most of it, the app doesn't really provide a whole lot of new value that you can't already do from the watch, but maybe sometimes it's easier just to use uh, your phone instead of your watch if you're trying to do some things like that. So that was a lot to talk about there, but let's boil it down to the positives and the negatives for this watch. Now, the positives, the first one I think is the comfort and the aesthetic of this watch. It feels really nice. I can wear it as long as I ever really want to and it never gets uncomfortable. I think it looks really nice. It kind of has like the, the new iPad kind of look on the side, how it's just like that kind of not high gloss metal, but it, it, it you know, not a whole lot of curves. I think it looks really good, honestly. Then I also think that the speaker on here and the microphone works really well. People don't ever really know that I'm talking to my watch and it makes it easier to kind of freeze up your hand if you don't have earbuds and you just want to talk while you're doing something and you're moving around. It's kind of nice to just have it on your wrist. The screen on here I think works really well. I like the setup of this. Again, it's a lot like the Gen 5. We like the Gen 5 and this is really, really similar to the Gen 5 in so many ways. So as with most Wear OS watches, I really do like the layout of it. I think it, you know, it's easy to use, very intuitive. Uh, it does a really good job of showing you what you need to know and making things relatively customizable. In this situation, also having the buttons customizable. I think that's a really nice add there. And so the watch just works really well. I like having eight gigabytes of storage in here. So if I'm going for a run, I can have GPS on, I can have Bluetooth on my earbuds and listen to music, track my workout and not have to worry about bringing my phone. Now, some of the shortcomings of this watch, I think that overall fitness tracking, it works moderately well with this, but we do see it's not quite at the level that like the Galaxy Watch Active 2 is. Some more drawbacks, this doesn't actually have like a, a really accessible water mode where your touch screen is temporarily disabled if you're showering or something. And so what you end up getting is in the shower, it'll like, you'll have some accidental touches or false touches where it starts like skipping songs or doing weird things. And before anyone goes in the comments and says, why do you need a watch in the shower? And like, I, I get that comment all the time. And honestly, like it's the same reason you need to watch anywhere, right? So you can tell the time and maybe you control your music. If you're playing music on the outside, like I have a speaker outside my shower and I'll control with my watch sometimes, um, or maybe to see notifications, like you don't need it in the shower, but you know, it's nice to have it in the shower. And if it's waterproof, I would like to have a really accessible way to temporarily disable the screen. Now you can disable the screen, but it's just a little bit more complicated than I would actually like. Now, besides that, it doesn't have key charging. Like I said, it's something that I think all watches in the future should have key charging, kind of a standard 
charging way, uh, just a way to charge them that's similar to how you charge a phone. So one last complaint kind of related to the watch tiles here. I wish that you could have more watch tiles, first of all. So five is not bad, but if you could have a couple more, I think that would be kind of a nice add there. And secondly, I wish that the crown could be used a little bit more, maybe to like scroll through the watch tiles, like what we see on like the Galaxy watch, for example. Um, but other than that, I think this is a really impressive watch. It's one that I really like. I'll be wearing it for a while and giving you guys updates along the way, what I think about this watch. I think that, you know, if you're between this one and the Fossil Gen 5, I'll make another video about that in the future, but they're both really good picks as far as Wear OS watches go, and I think that this is going to be a very popular watch. So, as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. As always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.